uh, welcome to this module and in this module what we will look at we will look at how can we create or fabricate SU8 pillars uh, on the goal pad uh, that we have seen the process flow of fabrication in the last module and then we will also see how to create a diaphragm. So, there are two uh, process and once we finish uh, that two process you will see how can you have a chip indicated with lot of sensors. Okay. So, if you see the slide uh, in the last module we have seen how can we create the gold pad on the piezoresistive sensors right and we have seen how can we do that we have to deposit an insulating material oh, and then we have to open the contact and then we can uh, deposit gold and pattern the gold such that we have a gold pad and the gold contacts would be on each contact pad this contact pads as you can see the, if you see this piezo resistive material or uh, sensor there are four of those each sensor will have two pads. So, eight for that two for heater will be 10 and one for the gold will be 11. So, one if I say from here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and for a gold 11. Okay. So, 11 pads uh, we have opened after we have in, uh, deposited insulator on the piezo resistive um, sensor and then open the contact area uh, for depositing gold and in the center there is an insulating material on that we have a gold pad. So, let us see how can we deposit uh, or fabricate or draw the process flow for fabricating the SU8 pillars. Now, we have to have SU8 pillars right. So, for SU8 pillars let us see how can we uh, draw the process. So, if I draw the wafer it is an oxidized silicon wafer right we all know on the oxidized silicon wafer we have a heater right on heater we have insulating layer except on the heater contact on that we have uh, interdigitated electrodes right on this we will we have a piezo resistive material and on that we have the gold pad so let me use different pen color of uh, this pen is okay dark blue that is fine. So, here is our PCVD silicon dioxide let me write it down silicon dioxide with thermal evaporation uh, thermal oxidation silicon wafer silicon dioxide silicon dioxide using PCVD right we have nichrome heater then we have interdigitated electrodes on that we have piezo resistive sensor on this we have gold pad ok. Now, what we want we want SU8 pillars we want this structure right these pillars are SU8 SU8 ok. So, let us see the process of how can we uh, fabricate this SU8 pillars or pattern SU8 pillars on this particular chip. Hmm. So, for that what we have to do so I will just like uh, remove this thing for a while so that we can understand it properly. Hmm. A u pad we just delete it now we know ok. So, if I want to fabricate or pattern S u 8 on this chip on this chip then I will spin coat I will spin coat this S u 8 material spin coat this 
spin code acid base. There, there are several kind of H2 8 and uh, uh, depending on the viscosity we can have different thickness of H2 8 material right. So, right now we are interested in having H2 8 pillars with 50 microns thickness 50 micron thickness. Hmm? So, we will deposit a SU8 which can give us 50 micron thickness uh, by controlling the rotations on the uh, spin coater. So, once I spin coat SU8 on the chip what is the next step? Next step is pre bake or soft bake soft bake. Now, in this case soft bake is done at 65 degree centigrade and the time depends on time for baking depends on SU8 thickness. Time for baking depends on SU8 thickness. All right. So, after spin coating on the chip this SU8 material we will do the soft baking. After soft baking the next step is mask right. So, let us see uh, and understand this thing SU8 is a negative photoresist it will behave as a negative photoresist all right. So, if I want to have a mask on this right my I want SU8 pillars only on two places and remaining places I do not want SU8 pillars. So, what kind of mask I can use if SU8 is a negative photoresist that means area which is not exposed right area which is not exposed will be weaker right area which is not exposed will be weaker. So, I will have a wafer a mask which is my dark field mask dark field mask So, in dark field mask as you can see the most of the area in the mask is dark and the area which one we want to expose does not have any chrome material right it is a chrome mask it is a chrome mask. So, you can see here here and here you we can go and remaining area you will not go. So, from here and here the UV can pass through the remaining area UV cannot pass through ok. So, this after loading this is a dark field mask will go for UV exposure UV exposure. So, you when we do the UV exposure what happens the area which is not exposed the area which is not exposed will become weaker because this is negative photoresist and the area which is exposed will become stronger right. So, if you see the slide after UV exposure the next step will be the next step in uh, reality should be. So, if I draw the photolithography process then it is spin coating spin coat photoresist next step is soft bake soft bake right. Next step is UV exposure, next step is photoresist developer, next step is hard bake. Right. This is in case of photoresist positive and negative photoresist. In case of SU8 which behaves as negative photoresist the process is like this spin coat spin coat SU8 next step is soft bake like I said 65 degree time depends on the thickness UV exposure next step is hard bake this is done around 90 95 degree centigrade again time depends on the thickness. Now, when I say time depend on thickness how we will know using the data sheet data sheet for SU8 ok. After hard bake you have to go for PR developing PR developing 
Okay. So, in positive and negative photo resist, these are the steps, in SU8, these are the steps. So, so, what is the change in the uh, process flow? If you can see the slide, the change in the process flow is that after UV exposure, instead of going for photoresist developer, we have to go for hard baking. So, when I say that UV exposure we have done, the next step is hard bake. And hard baking for SU8 is around 95 degrees centigrade, again for how much time? depends on the thickness of SU8 material. After hard bake, photoresist developer, right. So, when you develop your photoresist after hard baking, what you will find is what you will find is that the SU8 will only be in this region and remaining region SU8 will be will get developed. In remaining region the photoresist that is your SU8 will get developed. So, these are my SU8 pillars all right. These are my SU8 pillars. Now, I will uh, place this wafer. So, now what you understand that this is a wafer for example and I have SU8 pillars on the wafer right vertical pillars on the wafer. If you understand the uh, physical vapor deposition there is a shadowing effect. So, because of that if I have a pillar uh, let me explain you a little bit uh, if I can help you out mm, ok. You understand do not consider this top surface like let me say like this ok. Now, this is the wafer this is a wafer and this tip this tip that comes out here right this much this this tip is your SU8 pillar ok. Do not consider the top uh, section of the pen. Now, if I place the wafer like this I cannot coat on the side I cannot coat on the side. So, but if I tilt the wafer then I can coat on the side right at least one side we can coat it right. So, if I if I tilt the wafer at 45 degree angle in the uh, PVD which is physical vapor deposition then I would be able to coat this SU8 pillar with a metal. That means, the SU8 pillar will have the conductive line because at least one side of the SU8 pillar will be coated with metal. Hmm. So, SU8 metal coating will be the next step. How can we do that? We can place the wafer, we can do the lithography. So, if you see again I will do the lithography and I will only open I can do either lithography or I can just save the uh, protect only half of this and remaining. Uh, so, once you if you tilt the wafer anyway even you do not do lithography if you tilt the wafer then you will have SU8 only uh, the material will be only deposited in this area in both the cases. Right. So, I will have a conductive one. So, this SU8 pillar will have a metal contact, metal contact all right. So, if I go back and you see what you see here, you see that you have a chip, you have a chip right with SU8 pillars coated with metal. That means, till, till last module we saw this gold pad on the piezoresistive sensor in this module we see the SU8 pillars right without coating and SU8 pillars with metal coating. Now, what is the next step? Next step is we have to create a diaphragm on the back side of the silicon wafer. This diaphragm will be exactly on the back side of this. Hmm. So, if I have a wafer, if I have a wafer and these are my piezoresistive sensor my diaphragm would be like this. Hmm. The, the why we have to create this diaphragm? Why to create this diaphragm? Because these are piezoresistive sensors, right? These are piezoresistive sensors. So, if I apply a pressure or force, then if I apply a force or uh, pressure, what will happen? This diaphragm will bend, and depending on how much the diaphragm is bending, this there will be change in the piezoresistivity the piezo resistance right there will be change in the resistance. Uh, so, thinner the diaphragm 
better the sensitivity. But we have to optimize the diaphragm thickness because then the mechanical stability will reduce. So, in this case we are creating uh, SU8 pillars and below the SU8 pillars uh, there is an electrode which is gold pad, below that there is insulating material, below that there is a piezo resistor material, below that there is again insulating material, below that there is a micro heater, micro heater is on the oxide silicon substrate and on the back side we have to create a diaphragm. So, that when we apply pressure uh, onto the SU8 pillars the, the applying pressure will uh, change the piezo resistivity of the piezo resistor depending how much the diaphragm will bend. So, to create a diaphragm we are etching the silicon from the back side of the wafer right that is the idea that is why we are creating the, uh, uh, the diaphragm on the back side. So, if you go to the slide and if you see what I want, I want to now, so let me just rub this down, it becomes little bit easier in that way. The only thing tricky about SU8 is that after UV exposure it will go for hard back. So, if you remember that much then it, your life becomes easier. Okay. So, now if I want to create a diaphragm on the back side of this chip so that whenever I apply pressure the piezo resistor would change its resistance right. What should I do? I should I should do the lithography, but on the back side of the wafer. So, in that case I will deposit a photo resist. This will be my positive photo resist right positive photo resist then I will do positive after that I will go for soft bake which is a 90 degree 1 minute hot plate after that I will load the mask and I want to etch the region which is below this piezo resistor region right this is piezo right. So, piezo resistor region. So, I want to etch my wafer like here hmm, and this area I want to protect, this area and this area I want to protect, this area I want to etch. So, I will uh, design my mask for positive photo resist. So, positive photo resist the unexposed region will be will be stronger right. So, I have a bright field mask as you can see and in this we will have we have unexposed region because this photo resist will be unexposed in this particular blocks while it will get exposed in this block right. So, if I go for UV exposure, if I go for UV exposure what will happen? The unexposed region will be stronger right. So, the after this a soft pick I load the mask and go for UV exposure when I do that followed by developing photo resist right in PR developer what will I have? I will have I will have photo resist only in this area and the remaining area photo resist will be etched right. Now, next step is hard bake, next step is hard bake, hard bake you all know positive photo resist 120 degree centigrade 1 minute hot plate. After hard baking we have to remove the silicon dioxide from this region. So, we have to go for buffer hydrofluoric acid or BHF right. So, what will happen? silicon dioxide will get H right because of the buffer hydrofluoric acid. What is the next step? 
I will protect the front side right either mechanically or using the photo resist and back side of the wafer please look at this slide in the back side of the wafer I will etch using deep reactive ion etching this is a dry etching when you go for silicon etching there are two types wet etching and dry etching in wet etching you can use two different chemicals TMAH and KOH dry etching is RIE or DRIE right there is a anisotropic etching there is a isotropic etching reactive ion etching deep reactive ion etching potassium hydroxide tetramethyl ammonium hydroxide now uh, there is advantage disadvantage in both the cases when when you see a different lecture in which uh, somebody teaches you or maybe in my earlier lecture you will see how uh, when you we were looking at the uh, bulk micro machining probably at that time I have taught you that how can we use DRI or wet etching and what is the difference right. So, if not just go through uh, a YouTube videos where you can see how DRI works, how RI works, how KOH works and what is the uh, what happens when we use TMAH right. TMAH is also neurotoxic it has to be used at 25 degrees centigrade KOH will be used at 80 degrees centigrade uh, DRI uh, will give us a vertical wall. So, if I use DRI and if I etch the silicon uh, wafer then what will I have? I will have a di diaphragm if I use DRI then I will have diaphragm like this. Now, I know the rate of etching of DRI suppose DRI etch rate is uh, 4 micrometer per minute and if the thickness of this wafer is 500 microns then I would know how many minutes I need to create a diaphragm of 100 microns correct simple. So, I have to etch 400 microns if I want to create a diaphragm diaphragm is this region and let us say that this region is about 100 micrometers you depends like I said thinner the diaphragm better the sensitivity thinner the diaphragm better the sensitivity. Now, what you have and then finally, you can remove this what you have is a complete chip integrated it. So, the first the bottom layer okay, bottom layer is heater heater over heater that is silicon dioxide insulator over insulator there are interdigitated electrodes made up of chrome gold over this there is again a insulator oh, okay. over this there is a piezo resistor. over this insulator over that gold pad right over gold pad we do not have <laughs> slides I will write down this is on the gold pad you have SU 8 pillars and then we make this pillars uh, we coat metal and below heater that is silicon dioxide on silicon wafer and this is my diaphragm as well right. So, this is my chip this is my chip this is what we have learned in all the modules together how to make this biochip. Now, you can see that you are learning so many things so many different uh, sensors onto one chip, but the idea is what to do with the sensors and how can we use these sensors uh, for the given application that is to understand the properties of tissues hmm? properties of a tissue suppose a tissue from the biopsy is given to you. What are the properties that we can understand? So, using this chip let us see how can we use different or how can you understand different properties of tissue ok. So, let us keep this slide as a last slide for this module and let me teach you how can you use this slide or use this chip 
which is our biochip BAMP based biochip for understanding the change in the tissue properties. When I say change in tissue properties, there are several changes right from electrical to mechanical to thermal to pH right several things changes and that changes when the, the tissue is diseased. That is if we take the tissue from the breast cancer area depending on the stage or as the stage of the cancer progresses there is a change in the tissue properties. So, let me show you let me show you before we end this slide uh, I have something for you in my hand uh, and that is your biochip. Okay. These are the chips uh, these are the chips in my hand right over here and this chips are the one that you have seen on the glass slide on the uh, in the in the uh, modules right all the modules including today this is the chip that we want to design. Uh, is it possible to zoom little bit? So, you can see here right you can see that I am holding several chips here in my hand if you can just focus on one which is right over here right and you can see that this chip has all the uh, sensors that we are talking about in this particular module all right. So, this is uh, these are the chips that we will be using for understanding the tissue property. These are oxidized silicon wafer on that like I said there is a heater, insulator, IDEs, visualistic material, insulator, gold pad, SU8 pillar, metal on the gold pad on the back there is a diaphragm all right. So, let us see uh, how can we use this chip to understand the tissue properties in the next module all right. So, till then uh, what you have to do you have to understand the this particular module in detail what I have taught uh, particularly in this section we have seen SU8, SU8 has a little bit of trick like I said when you take a photoregist which is positive photoregist or a negative photoregist the standard step of photolithography is spin coat the photoregist uh, soft bake it then uh, load the mask UV expose photoregist development and hard bake. In SU8 what is the difference you spin coat it then soft bake it then expose it then hard bake it then you have to go for photoregist development right easy. And if you want to make the uh, photoregist even harder that is SU8 even harder after hard baking and, and the photoregist development uh, hard baking exposure and the photoregist development of course, uh, after hard so that is spin coat soft bake uh, expose hard bake then a uh, photoregist developer in, in case of SU8 and then after that you can bake this wafer with SU8 at little bit higher temperature let us say 130 or 140 degrees centigrade to make the SU8 pillar stronger. And then what we have seen that how can we deposit metal and how can we create a diaphragm. For diaphragm we have used deep reactive ion edge like I said there are several techniques to edge the diaphragm. Now, since bulk of the material is etched in this particular step we will consider this as a bulk micro machining right I have taught you what exactly bulk micro machining is in my earlier modules right. So, uh, let us see how can we use uh, this chip that I have shown it to you uh, in the next module uh, for understanding the tissue property. Till then you take care I will see you in the next class.